Hello everyone, my name is Mark Sugi. I'm a fellow at UCSF in abdominal imaging and ultrasound. I'll be presenting the flipped ovary sign today. I'd like to thank my collaborators, Anika Patel, Dr. Johnny Yi, and Dr. Maitre Patel for their support of this project, which is based on some work that I had an opportunity to do while I was a resident at the Mayo Clinic in Arizona. I have no disclosures. The sonographic diagnosis of ovarian torsion can be challenging. Morphologic findings are important as Doppler evaluation is insufficient for diagnosis. 25 to 40 percent of cases have normal Doppler findings and the absence of flow is a late finding that predicts infarction. Morphologic abnormalities often present but may be unrecognized as features of torsion and these include unilateral ovarian enlargement, ovarian stromal edema which pushes the follicles to the edge of the ovary, a mass within the ovary, which is often eccentric and serves as a lead point mass, and a twisted vascular pedicle adjacent to the ovary, also known as the whirlpool sign. So this study describes the flipped ovary sign, which is another morphologic finding of ovarian torsion. Our objectives today are to identify normal and pathologic findings in the ovary that allow for recognition of the flipped ovary sign, for example, in the setting of a lead point cyst or mass. To understand the clinical circumstances and time course with which this sign is typically observed, and to recognize other morphologic characteristics of ovarian torsion that may be absent in cases of intermittent torsion or early torsion. All right, so let's look at some of the morphologic findings of ovarian torsion, and we'll begin with a common finding unilateral ovarian enlargement. This is a case of a 20 year old woman with left ovarian torsion proven at surgery. And the first thing you'll notice is marked asymmetric enlargement of this left ovary, which is a demitis, has a small amount of free fluid adjacent to it, in comparison to the right ovary, which is normal in size. And I'll turn your attention to the volumes. This left ovary measures about 70 ml, and the right ovary 4 ml. Remember that the average volume of an ovary in a premenopausal woman is about 10 ml, but can range up to 20 ml and still be within normal limits. The next morphologic finding that we'll discuss is stromal edema, which pushes follicles to the edge of the ovary. These are two different cases of ovarian torsion proven at surgery. On the left image, you'll note the central stromal edema within the ovary, which pushes these follicles to the edge, and very similar morphologic findings in this case in the right image involving the right ovary. Again, stromal edema, peripheralization of the follicles. Another important morphologic feature to look for in the setting of ovarian torsion is the presence of a mass or a cyst within the ovary, which is often eccentric and serves as a lead point, causing the ovary to twist on the vascular pedicle. These are two separate cases of ovarian torsion, again proven at surgery. On the left image, you can see an echogenic mass with posterior shadowing, eccentrically located within the ovary, stromal edema, peripheralization of the follicles. This turned out to be a dermoid cyst leading to torsion. On the right image, again, enlarged ovary, stromal edema, peripheralization of the follicles, and in this case, a lead point um, hemorrhagic corpus luteal cyst um, leading to torsion. Let's take a look at some pitfalls. Remember that unilateral ovarian enlargement, stromal edema, and associated peripheralization of the follicles are nonspecific signs. They have a reported sensitivity for torsion of about 85% in the literature, but a specificity of less than 20%. Um, this is a case of a 27-year-old woman who presented with acute left lower quadrant pain. You can see that her left ovary is very enlarged, very demitous and heterogeneous with a volume of 135 ml, um, lacking some classic features of peripheralization of the follicles, but you can see on the cine sweep, very heterogeneous, edematous appearing um, stroma. This patient was taken to the operating room given clinical concern for torsion and found to have a ruptured hemorrhagic cyst, no torsion. Here's another pitfall case, 22 year old woman with acute right lower quadrant pain. You can see the ovary on the right is enlarged, volume of 33 ml, stromal edema, peripheralization of the follicles. This patient's clinical history was notable for inflammatory bowel disease. And at the time of her ultrasound, she underwent concurrent contrast enhanced CT. On these coronal CT images, you can appreciate in significant inflammatory change in the right lower abdomen, uh, which is related to active inflammation in the setting of her Crohn's disease. Uh, it turns out there was a loop of bowel seen in the far right image um, sitting right on top of the ovary, leading to reactive edema 
um, no torsion in this case. Another important and highly specific sign of ovarian torsion is the twisted vascular pedicle or whirlpool sign, um, which describes twisting of the vascular supply to the ovary, which you can beautifully see in this grayscale cine image um, with this twirling or swirling of the, of the pedicle um, with associated findings of ovarian enlargement, stromal edema, peripheralization of the follicles, in this 28-year-old woman with proven left ovarian uh, torsion at surgery. And on the right image, um, again, you can beautifully see the twisting of the pedicle at laparoscopy leading up to the ovary. So this is a really nice sign to look for um, and especially helpful if your sonographers are trained to look for it because when you see it, it can um, increase your confidence in making this diagnosis substantially. Here's another case of the whirlpool sign, this time in a 20-year-old woman with surgically proven ovarian torsion. On the grayscale cine image, you can see twisting of this pedicle. You can throw some color Doppler on there. You can see the direction of flow around this pedicle. Now that we've looked at some of the morphologic features of torsion, we're gonna move on to the methods of our research study. Uh, we performed an organizational database search for um, of pelvic ultrasounds containing the word torsion between July 2016 and June 2019. Additional inclusion criteria included two ultrasound examinations that were performed within 30 days of one another, surgical consultation, and pathologic confirmation. The ultrasound images were reviewed to determine whether a 180 degree change in the longitudinal axis of the ovary had occurred. So in other words, if this were the presentation um, ultrasound with a lead point cyst or mass, the follow-up ultrasound essentially showed that the orientation had flipped. The results of our study yielded 1,059 patients with torsion, 31 met inclusion criteria, 10 of these patients underwent surgery within one week of the follow-up ultrasound, and four of them had proven ovarian torsion at surgery. Of the surgically proven cases, three showed the flipped ovary sign. All the initial ultrasound examinations were interpreted as negative, and the flipped orientation or the flipped ovary sign was recognized in two of the follow-up exams and was not present in any of the patients that did not go to surgery. From the initial presentation to the follow-up ultrasound exam, the average interval time was 1.7 days. So the flipped ovary sign is an infrequent but possible finding when a woman with increasing pain has two serial ultrasound examinations and the ovary has a cyst or a mass that is present on both examinations. The orientation of the ovary flips between the two studies and is recognized by the different position of the mass. Let's take a look at the cases that demonstrated the flipped ovary sign. The first case is a 35-year-old woman who presented with left lower quadrant and flank pain on initial endovaginal ultrasound, you can see a cyst with layering hemorrhage and a reticular pattern of echoes consistent with a hemorrhagic cyst, as well as some trace-free fluid adjacent to the ovary. Otherwise unremarkable, this, this exam was interpreted as negative for torsion and the patient was discharged home. She returned to the emergency department a couple of days later. Now you can see that the ovary has flipped in its orientation. Um, again, some trace-free fluid was seen and arguably some minimal stromal edema was present. Doppler evaluation of the ovary on the repeat ultrasound examination was normal with normal venous and arterial, color Doppler, and spectral waveforms. On the basis of the reversed orientation of the ovary as well as clinical concern for torsion, the patient was taken to diagnostic laparoscopy where you can beautifully see the twisting of the pedicle and this ovary was able to be salvaged. The second case is a 52-year-old woman with left lower quadrant and flank pain. Uh, initial endovaginal ultrasound in the emergency department showed a cystic lesion within the ovary, which was otherwise unremarkable for torsion. Uh, not shown here, but the color Doppler flow was normal. And the patient was discharged with gynecologic follow-up, but returned to the emergency department 35 hours later here on endovaginal ultrasound on her repeat examination, you can appreciate that the orientation of the ovary has flipped such that the dominant cystic component of this lesion is now at the posterior aspect of the, of the ovary, and also some mild stromal edema was also seen. On the basis of the reversed orientation of the ovary, as well as some mild stromal edema and ongoing clinical concern for, for torsion, the patient was taken to surgery. And at laparoscopy, you can see there was twisting of the pedicle, 
given that the patient was uh, postmenopausal and in the presence of the cystic lesion, which was seen at ultrasound, an oophorectomy was performed and showed a benign serous cystadenoma. The third and final case is a 43-year-old woman with intermittent right pelvic pain over the past four days. Uh, initial transabdominal ultrasound shows a dominant follicle within the right ovary, which was otherwise normal in appearance uh, with normal colored Doppler flow. The patient was discharged home and um, returned to the emergency department 36 hours later, again with similar clinical symptoms. And now you can appreciate that this dominant follicle is now at the inferior aspect of the ovary on this transabdominal longitudinal view of the right ovary. No free fluid, no significant stromal edema, and really an absence of other morphologic features that would suggest torsion in this case. Given continued clinical concern for torsion, however, the patient was taken to the operating room. And at laparoscopy, you can again really nicely see the twisting of the vascular pedicle connecting to the ovary here. Um, in this case, the surgeon noted that the parenchyma of the ovary appeared healthy, which was consistent with the clinical picture of intermittent torsion. Um, given the patient's desire for permanent sterilization, oophorectomy was performed and showed a normal ovary with normal follicles. The diagnosis of ovarian torsion remains challenging. The flipped ovary sign can be useful to suspect or increase confidence in the diagnosis, even when more common signs of torsion, especially morphologic signs, are absent and when serial examinations are available for comparison. Gynecologic imagers should be aware of this infrequent but potentially very useful sign of ovarian torsion. I'd like to thank the AIUM for hosting this online and uh, especially Dr. Maitre Patel for mentoring this project. Thank you.